first of all, thank you very much for being here. I would like to introduce to you today Swifty Pi, how to take Swift into the next frontier. But let me introduce myself, even though they already did it. Um, as you said, my name is Catherine Castellano, but you can call me Kate. I am an informatics engineer from Venezuela, and I am currently working on a project that I am very passionate about, which is the female health. And that is why I'm working with an organization called Clue, which is a female health company based in Berlin. So our agenda today will be the following. At the beginning, I would like to make an introduction about Swift in embedded systems. Then I will show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi and add Swift to it. Then I will talk to you about the relationship between the Raspberry Pi pins and Swift. Then we will grab all of this concept and show you in a demo how you can use this project in a real life situation. And then we will wrap it up with the lessons learned. Just grab a little bit of water. So, Swift and embedded systems. If you want to talk about that, we first need to talk about the evolution of Swift. As we all know, Swift is a very flexible and versatile language. At the beginning, it was mostly created for uh, mobile development, but then we have seen how it has transitioned its way into server-side development with frameworks such as Vapor, Ketura, or Perfect. What we have yet seen is extensive usage in the embedded system development. And there are many reasons for that, but one of the most important reasons is that we're still at the beginning of this technology. So I hope that with this talk, you get all inspired and we help us to push the language a little bit further. So. When we talk about embedded systems, the thing that we have to mention is the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi, as its creators define it, is a low cost, credit card size computer that was created to enable people to learn about computing and also programming languages such as Python. But why this is important for all of us? It is important because this small computer can run uh, a lot of operating system based on Linux. And as you remember, when Swift was open source, they launched a port for Linux. In this port, we have our favorite elements from Swift, such as Swift without the Objective-C runtime, the GLBC modules, the core libraries, the LLDB and the bugging, and the Swift package manager. So now that I hope that I convince you to use a Raspberry Pi for Swift, how we can set it up? So the first decision that we have to do is we have to choose an operating system. So when you talk to somebody and say, well, you buy a Raspberry Pi and you want to use it, the first recommendation they're going to tell you is to use a friendly operating system called Raspbian, which is a distro based on Debian. And even though it is very friendly, I would personally recommend that you use Ubuntu, specifically Ubuntu 16.04, which is, um, will allow us to have a lot of benefits for Swift. Okay. Now I have to make the first disclaimer of the night. There is a lot of information on how to set up your Raspberry Pi. And for example, you can set it up in a headless mode, you can set it up with an HDMI cable, or use an Ethernet cable for internet. But um, even though I would love to explain that to all of you, um, I just have 20 minutes. So I will skip out this part, but you will find it on my repository, um, how to set it up in a headless mode. So let's figure out that we have a Raspberry Pi up and running. How do we add Swift to it? This is the second disclaimer of the night, which is there is no support yet for Swift 4.1 in ARM v7 architectures, which is the architecture that we have or the processor that we have on the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, there are many reasons because why this is not working. But well, the main one is there are lack of resources on the Swift on ARM Linux camp, which has um, prevented us to move forward to Swift 4.4 well, 4 that we have right now, 4.1. But if you don't mind using Swift 3.1.1, this is the current version that we can use on the Raspberry Pi. 
Now that we all live with that decision, let's move a little bit forward. How to set up Swift on a Raspberry Pi? This is actually very simple. So if you go to the Swift, the Swift GitHub repository, you will see that you are able to download um, the binaries and install them. They have a very compressed and very extensive documentation on how to do this. And they also recommend, for example, that you install other libraries such as Clang or OpenSSL and such. So once they did all of that, you just have to go into your terminal on the Raspberry Pi and verify that the version that you install is a 3.1.1. If you install the version 4.1, you might be able to do Swift build, but it will complain once you want to run a project. So what are two elements that we have right now? We have Raspberry Pi up and running, and now we can run code on the Raspberry Pi Swift. So let's talk about the other element, Swift with pins. So uh, I will move to the side of it, move, remove the Raspberry Pi and the Swift, and I will talk about circuits. So I don't know how many of you have worked with circuits before, but the first project that you use is you light up a LED. And that is the case of what we're gonna do here. So how do we lay out our circuit? As we see on the top, we have a breadboard that contains two elements. We will have a resistor that will regulate the voltage for the LED. We have the LED that will turn on and off. And we have two cables going to the Raspberry Pi. Those cables go to the GPIO pins. The GPIO means general input-output pins that um, can be set to either produce or receive signals. The first pin that we see on the left is connected to the resistor. It's a ground pin. And then the second connection that we see to the longer, LED, longer leg of the LED is, the GPIO, is connected to a GPIO pin that we will be set up as output. So now that we have our connection set up and everything is ready to see and verify the LED, it will turn on and turn off, how do we test this? So an, an easy way to test this is in our, in our terminal, in our terminal, we just do um, apt-get install wiring pi. This is a library that will allow us to connect to our GPIO pins. And once we have the library installed, we just have to set any of the GPIO pins to mode output. And if we wanted to switch it on, we do that code over there, which is GPIO write the number of the pin and one. What this will do, it will set the value to one and turn the pin, uh, turn the LED on. If we wanted to turn it off, we just have to write 13 zero and it will turn it off. But uh, because my talk is full of disclaimers, there is another one. So as you can see here, this is the layout of the pins on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we can see that we have voltage pins at the beginning, we have some ground pins in the middle, and we have the GPIO pins. So if you want to verify your connection using the terminal, we just have to um, use the physical number. So the ones that you will see in the circle are the physical numbers that we can use on the terminal. But if we want to use it with Swift code, we have to use the GPIO number. So in the case that I was using the pin 13 over there on the terminal, on the Swift code, it will become the GPIO 27 pin. So now that I did this disclaimer, let's talk about Swift with GPIO. And for that, we have to thank Umberto Raimondi. Umberto Raimondi is a developer that created a Swift wrapper for us to be able to set up uh, the pins to produce or receive a signal. Um, to be able to use the library, it is very simple. In our package.swift, we just have to add its reposit his repository as a dependency. And once we build the project, it will download the, the content and we will be able to import the library into our project. Okay, now that we have the library in our project, how do we set it up and how do we turn it on and off as we were doing with the terminal? So the first thing I've done here is I said I imported the library, Swift to GPIO, and then I have 
a dictionary which will contain the GPIO end names and the GPIO pins, and a selected pin which will be the one that I will set up to produce or receive a signal. In the init method, as you can see there, I am determined that the dictionary for the GPIO S is of type Raspberry Pi 3. So depending on the Raspberry Pi that you have, you have to set it up, um, for example, to three, to two, to zero, depending on it. Then the second thing that we do is that we determine that the pin 27 is uh, a pin that exists and is able to use it, and if it, it's, everything is okay, then we set up its direction as an output. So now that we have that ready, the code to switch it on and switch it off is completely simple. We just have to, I'm passing just a status, which is in this case can be on, and if the case of the status is on, then I will set the selected pin value to be one, and if it case that is zero, then I will set the selected pin value, the value to zero, and it, I will turn it off. So, this is a lot of information, but we are digesting it. What we can do so far. So we can turn on and off uh, the pins with using the Swift code, but that is very simple. How about if we extend this? How about if we can access to this code uh, through the outside? And if you are thinking about using a server, then we're right. Okay. And this makes the introduction to the real life project that I want to talk to you about. So, I am living currently in Berlin. This is our train system, it's called the BVG. Please don't ask me how to pronounce it in German, it's kind of complicated. Um, but the train system, it is very reliable. What it is not reliable is my calculations to get to the station. So most of the times I tend to lose the train when I, when I want to like, use it. So I decided, well, I wanted to create a project that will show me a visual cue on when do I have to leave my house with enough spare time to be able to arrive to the station and not run to it. So what I did for my project is that I, um, I'm running a server on my Raspberry Pi that I will connect to. And what I will do is that I will set up the departure station, which will be close to where I'm standing, then the arrival station, which will be one of the legs that this departure station goes from, and then I will schedule the journey. Um, so now that I've explained a little bit about how this project is theoretically work, let's talk about an important element of this project, which is the server. So for my server, I decided to use Vapor. Um, and to use Vapor, as I said, it's very simple. We just have to add the repository as a dependency to the project, and we will be able to use the library. But for some of you who have used Vapor before, um, we are not able to use the Vapor toolbox, which is the command line helper that will allow you to um, run the server, to build a template of the project, and such and such, because this needs Swift 4.1. As I said, we can still use the library, but we can't use the Vapor toolbox. So if you're okay with that, then build up your server. And now let's see if the demo is working. That's why I took a little bit of the time. So, uh, okay. So what do I have here is my incoming train app. Uh, where is it? Does anybody, okay. <laughs> So, here I set the departure station. Let me pick one that is one of my favorites because we all the startups in Berlin are around it. It was called Kabusator. Then I will select an arrival station. Let's pick any of these. And before I schedule the journey, um, you're not able to see it because it's just hitting here. Um, I decided to create a project where I have a LED turn on and a buzzer. The buzzer will be a cue for a lot of us to hear when um, the project is running. And this is not going to be very graceful, but I will do like this because it is here. Uh, and if everything works, then we should be able to set it up. So.
There you go. So, <laughs> right now I should be able to run to my station and everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. But because I don't want to do that without finishing the talk, let's continue. So, what have we done here? As you could see, I showed you how flexible this language is. So we created three elements, uh, a mobile app, a server, and a connection to an embedded system just using Swift. So I think that is absolutely wonderful. And as I said, we didn't have to switch the languages. So let's wrap it up for now. What are the lessons that we learned? So first, as a recommendation, you can connect your Raspberry Pi to your computer and share your internet with Ethernet cable. So most of the times when you're using the Raspberry Pi, a lot of people connect it to the router. Um, but as I said, it is very easy and very portable if you do it like this. The second thing I want to uh, highlight is that the Raspberry Pi is still constrained to Swift 3.1.1 because there is no ARM support for Swift 4. Let's hope that this project moves forward and that we were able to use the benefits of Swift 4 in our Raspberry Pi. And then the second part of the lessons learned is something related to the Raspberry Pi and something that happens a lot of times to me. So if the LED does not turn on, check your connection. So wiggle the cables, change the pins and such because it happened to me several times and sometimes you can miss things. And then as a final recall, please try not to mix the physical pin number and the DPIO number. So the physical pin number is for you to verify the connection through the terminal, but the GPIO number is the one that you will be using um, on our Swift code. And that was pretty much everything for me. This is my Twitter handle, at Kate Castellano. If you have any questions related to embedded systems, Raspberry Pi, Swift, or anything, please just tweet at me. And then you can find the, in my GitHub repo, called SwiftyPy, the code for our mobile app, the server, including also the um, lead code. And another remark that I want to do before I close this is that if anybody here from Japan wants to try to do a project like this, I was able to find an API that will get all the Tokyo stations, but because I don't know Japanese, um, I was not able to use it and to showcase to you. But if somebody wants to work on that, just come and tell me. Thank you very much.